childhood dreams are being realized. Welcome to part two. Let's jump right into it. I thought I was going to have to build Anya's trousers from scratch, but I happened upon this pair of stretchy pants with an elastic waistband in the perfect shade of brown at the thrift store. All I had to do was take in the legs a little bit, using the method of placing them on inside out, marking with chalk, and then stitching along those lines. I then set to work on the tunic. I wasn't trying to make an authentic Kosovarotka, nor was I intent on making it look exactly like the film rendition, more so I was hoping it would look sort of similar, but mostly for it to be able to deconstruct in an organized fashion to reveal the yellow dress underneath. These are the shapes that I ended up cutting out. Here you see me making the sleeves. I cut out four of these shapes because my plan was for each sleeve to be divided into two pieces. I put the front and the back onto my dress form to do some figuring, and my explanation was so very tedious that I will spare you and give you the abbreviated version. Here we are so far. The idea here is that you want it to kind of just fall apart in a sense. The dress will just kind of fall out of it. And I thought about using snaps, but in order to get snaps to separate, you have to do a pretty rough motion to separate them all. You could do velcro, but of course it's also a rough motion and it makes that tearing sound. So I decided maybe I would try grommets and lace it together. This could be a very bad idea. Oh, my dear sweet child, you have no idea. So I cut it at the waist. I added a waistband. The belt's gonna cover that. And now I'm gonna sew up the side seam just to this point. Right here is where the sleeve goes. So I'm feeling pretty bummed. Today was supposed to be a day where I was going to accomplish so many things and nope. I feel horrible. It's just one of those days. I've felt a lot worse than this. It's just it's just kind of a bummer. I had some broth, took a shower, and I am feeling a little bit better and ready to get going on this project. Here is a jacket that I found at the thrift store to use to make the placket, the cuffs, and the collar. It was the perfect color, and it was even made of the same stuff as the tunic fabric. But my good fortune did not end there. The placket has buttons and buttonholes that I thought I was going to have to make, and then I realized if I just cut out this section here to here, those are already finished for me. I'll have to sew in the brown buttons that I got because they are dark brown buttons in the film. But look how much work has been just done for me if I just cut this section out and then sew it in as a placket. That's going to cut down my workload so much and I find buttonholes very tedious. So I am just a little bit excited about this. I just ran outside to check on some goats, see how they were doing. <laughs> One of them's actually having her babies right now. So. I cut this cotton fabric into strips, stitched them together end to end, folded it in half, and set it aside. But don't worry, its purpose will be explained later in the video. Then I hemmed all the edges of this puzzle of a tunic, and attached the half cuffs to each half sleeve end, turned the raw edge under, and hand stitched it into place. Next, it was time to attach that placket. Easier said than done, I detest putting in plackets, but I persevered and finally wrestled it into place. After that, I attacked the collar, which also had to be divided into several pieces. I made each piece very similar to the cuffs, sewing them together, turning them right side out, leaving one end open, and then hand stitching it into place on the inside. 
I wanted to make the process of putting on and taking off the tunic as easy as possible, so I added a strip of fabric to create elastic casings. And I think this was the best decision, construction-wise, that I made in this whole project. When I was finished, this is what it looked like on the inside. And here is the outside. Now back to those strips of fabric. I discovered that I had made them far too wide, but that was alright since I completely neglected to stabilize them, so I ripped the seams, trimmed them to half the size, and tossed in some stabilizer. And I had my strips for the grommets. Also known as eyelets. Actually, I used eyelets, technically. I just like to say grommets because I like the sound of the word better. The difference between grommets and eyelets, you probably don't want to know, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Grommets are generally bigger, and then they have two pieces that you punch together. Eyelets, just one piece, and they're generally smaller. And here ends our segment of boring bags you did not want to know. Then I set to work punching in those eyelets, and then I ran out of eyelets. So I made the trek to Hobby Lobby to accumulate more. It is a bit of a trek. It's about a 40 minute drive. I feel like a mountain person making the yearly journey to town. Wouldn't that be amazing to live on a mountain and only have to be in the civilized world just one time a year? Keep the practicalities to yourself and let me dream. Anyway, I was thinking maybe I should have selected gold because it better matched the cotton fabric, but I changed my mind when I saw this. Why is gold 50 cents more? I returned to work and punched in those eyelets. Unbeknownst to me, it was all for naught. I decided to make the two pieces separate so that I could wear the dress on its own if I wanted to, so I attached some snaps at the waist. For the belt, I harvested two rectangles from these brown pants, stitched them together, turned the tube inside out, and attached some velcro to each end to make it removable. Then it was time to figure out the lacing. I tried using this white jute string, but it didn't work. I tried some smaller jute string, and that also failed, supposing that perhaps I simply needed something a little more slidey. Slippery. I tried satin ribbon. Which was also a failure. Very frustrated, but still determined not to give up, I decided it was time to pull out the big guns. Actually, the glue gun. Believe it or not, I have never, ever used a glue gun for a sewing project, so I was a bit nervous. And I resorted to using Velcro, which I really did not want to use. But at this point, I really didn't know what else to do, since my original plan was not working. And I was running out of time, so I thought I might give it a go. I truly thought I was in frame for this part. This is me terrified at the idea of adding some tears to the hem. I really didn't want to do it, but I finally did it with my eyes closed. Just, just for the first cut. Don't try that at home. It is unsafe to use scissors with your eyes closed. Then it was time to get into character. I didn't film me applying my makeup because I don't know much about applying makeup, but I found this tutorial by Dope2111, which helped me so much. Yeah, it's a really good thing I'm learning to laugh at myself because this is terrible. This has turned out terrible. The hat is, um, it won't fit over the wig. It won't fit over. Oh my gosh, it looks so bad. That is on. I just got to get the rest of it on. And uh, I realized that I can't, I can't do this by myself. I need assistance. So I'm going to go find some. I only had one go at this because the sun was going down and it was really hard to get into it so I was very nervous. I did not know if this was going to work, but I think it worked out okay. I am so glad to have this finished. Things did not go according to plan. I don't know why I ever think they might because they never do, but I'm really glad I pushed through and finished this even though it didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted it to. I did finish it and I'm glad about that. I've learned a lot about constructing transformation dresses, and I am eager to apply this new knowledge to future transformation dress projects. Not yet. I need to take a break from it for a bit, but someday. Thank you so much to my sister for being willing to help me get into this. I could not have done that without you. Thank you so much for putting up with my ridiculousness. And I want to say thank you so much to everyone who commented on my last video, commenting that they wanted to see a part two and offering me all that encouragement. I really don't know how to tell you how much that helped and how much I appreciate that. I really do. Thank you so much for watching that video, and if you've made it to the end of this one, thank you so much. My sister says she thinks I look good with red hair. I don't hate it. Although I am kind of partial to this look. <laughs>